1999, I look at a muscle building magazine and see that having protein before bed is going to make me jacked. So I start consuming cottage cheese before bed. I don't really get jacked. What is the deal with having protein before bed? Is it actually beneficial? Particularly the age old quote unquote casein blends. There's casein proteins that are out there, right? Casein protein is a slower digesting milk protein. Like if you have milk protein, you have whey protein and casein blended. You have predominantly casein actually in milk protein and a small amount of whey. Whey protein absorbs very, very, very fast. So having whey protein right before bed doesn't really make sense. The idea behind having casein or a slow digesting protein before bed for building muscle, the theory is that you have a sustained trickle effect of protein that is preventing you from being in a fasted state for so long. Now a fasted state isn't always bad. Fasted state is good for so many different cellular processes and digestion. But if we also look at some of Brad Schoenfeld's work and some of the larger bodies of research, find that as long as you get enough protein over the course of the day, it doesn't really matter when you have your protein. But unfortunately, that literature, although very strong and very conclusive in many ways, it lacks some of the marginal data that we need to look at. And if you look at the chart that's on the screen right now, this is actually from one of Brad Schoenfeld, who I adore, he's awesome, awesome researcher, from one of his bodies of work. And there's hypertrophy and strength hypertrophy on the left side and you can see where strength is. Now you'll see there's daily protein intake and it's slightly skewed towards protein timing. What am I saying with all of this? Well, essentially there's this all constant bickering back and forth between all that matters is get enough protein in over the course of the day, which I tend to sit in that camp, generally speaking, for the sake of ease. But then there's the other side that says, no, like when we time our protein matters, including having protein at night. And will having protein at night actually increase muscle more? So we're gonna to get to a really intriguing study here in just a second that really just shows how interesting and sometimes flawed literature can be when you look at it on the surface. But the bottom line is looking at this chart, we see there are slightly more benefits to timing your protein correctly versus just not really caring and just having as much throughout the course of the day. Full disclaimer though, if you are regular Joe, just getting your protein in over the course of the day is nine tenths of the battle. Heck, it's 19 twentieths of the battle. It's true, just get your protein in. But if you really are trying to optimize, timing does matter. So let's look specifically at night for a second. International Journal of Exercise Science, eight weeks with experienced lifters. They gave them either 54 grams of casein, slow digesting protein in the morning before 12 p.m. or 54 grams of casein protein 90 minutes before bed. End result, no statistically significant change between the two. However, when you look at the actual changes, the morning group gained 0.4 kilograms of lean body mass, muscle. The evening group, the group that had the casein protein at night, gained 1.2 kilograms of lean body mass, or in this case, likely muscle. Three times as much may not be statistically significant for the sake of this paper, but still three times as much as having it in the morning. So there is a benefit there. Now, those of you that watch my channel, you know that I lost a lot of weight with intermittent fasting. I enjoy intermittent fasting. I think it is tremendous for fat loss and for many different things. When you sleep, you are in a fasted state. And if you were to give yourself a slow digesting protein like a casein or even a whey concentrate with maybe a little bit of cottage cheese or with some fat, you're going to end up having less of a fast, but you're gonna have more amino acids trickling into the bloodstream for an extended period of time. So there is definitely merit to having protein before bed to build muscle. If, and this is a huge if, it does not affect your sleep. For a while, I was saying, I'm gonna have another 50 grams of protein prior to bed. So I was like 30 minutes before bed, I was doing that. And I would wake up two hours later with my heart like pounding because I'm digesting. I would, my heart rate would be like 75, which is terrible at night. I'm usually down in the high 30s, low 40s. So something's going on while well, I'm digesting. If it impedes your sleep, forget it. 
the most important thing is your sleep. I put a link for something called Timeline Nutrition, which is a really interesting sort of longevity compound. It's called Urolithin A. You can skip over this part. They're a sponsor on this channel, but this is really important. I think you'll like it. They have a whey protein concentrate that has this urolithin in it. And the urolithin helps with what is called mitochondrial biogenesis. They've got studies published in JAMA. They've got lots of literature published on urolithin A. Usually it's derived from pomegranates, but only a small percentage of people actually get that benefit naturally. So being able to extract and actually use the urolithin A in combination with whey protein, this is the best time in my opinion to take this because you're getting some whey protein. I would mix it into some yogurt or mix it into some cottage cheese because you're getting a whey protein concentrate, which has the lactoferrin, I've talked about in other videos. Mix that in yogurt or cottage cheese. And then you also, of course, have the urolithin A that's mixed into this particular protein powder that they have. So with this, you're getting the mitochondrial benefit, sort of the quote unquote autophagy of the mitochondria. So a longevity cellular recycling benefit plus the recovery attribute. So you'll notice potentially more muscle mass, potentially more endurance improvement, and potentially better overall recovery. And of course, the big picture we're all looking at, potential longevity, which is great. I put that link down below. It's a 10% off discount link to try Timeline. So again, little individual packets of whey protein. They also have it in a pill form. They have it in a powder form. But in this case, I want you to get that protein before bed. So mix that with yogurt, mix it with cottage cheese, whatever. So link down below using code THOMAS gets you 10% off. Now, there is the controversy surrounding the fat loss piece. And I've talked about this in other videos, specifically talking about eating before bed and fat loss. But with something like a protein, you're likely not affecting fat loss. If you were to have, let's say, a bunch of carbohydrates right before bed, you'd probably negatively impact sleep and you would probably notice a difference in your fasting insulin levels the next day. If your fasting insulin levels are elevated, you are certainly going to be impeding fat loss because insulin directly impedes the action of the enzymes that are associated with fat loss, hormones instead of lipase, et cetera. Protein doesn't seem to do that. So you're probably not affecting fat loss. Now, you could argue that you're going to have less time overall fasted, but you're probably still in an equal deficit. Let me explain something that's kind of wild and it might be wonky, but for those of you that are critical thinkers, I think it's gonna make some sense. Does fasting or your fasted state after you stop eating, does it stop right after you stop eating or does it stop after you're done digesting? So if I were to have whey protein that absorbed really fast right before bed, it might be in and out in 30 minutes, effectively starting a fast 30 minutes after I consumed it. But if I consumed cottage cheese and almond butter, that might take three hours to leave my system, meaning maybe my fast didn't effectively start till three hours after I finished eating. If we were both timing the beginning of our fast at the time we stopped eating, we would have two very different effects because we would be quote unquote fasting or starting our fast, our overnight fast at different times. So it's splitting hairs. I think what matters the most is what's happening to your insulin levels the next morning. But more importantly, are you putting yourself in a deficit this way or not? When does the deficit start? Does the deficit start when you're done eating or does the deficit start when you're done digesting? So when it comes down to building muscle, I think that we have to really consider that maybe the fast isn't the most important thing for us and getting the amino acids in might be the most important thing. Now, interestingly enough, there was a study published in the International Journal of Sports Exercise and Metabolism, a large study, I talked about it a million times, 116 different studies, and it was 4,700 plus people. And what they found in this case was that beef and milk protein were ideal for building muscle and strength. And they found the two best times to consume milk protein, the two best times pre slash post, so pre and or post workout, and nighttime. Even though we have literature to suggest that total amount of protein throughout the course of the day is important, we have large data that also supports having protein before bed. So if you are in a block, even if you're like in a fat loss mode, but you're still in a block of building muscle and hypertrophy, I would consider, strongly consider, at least a few nights before bed, having like 90 minutes before bed, cottage cheese or yogurt, along with a little bit of whey protein and or milk protein and or casein protein, okay? and maybe, maybe even a little bit of fat to slow the digestion a tiny bit. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.